Happy New Year, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our first episode of 2024. Today, I'd like to interrupt our regularly scheduled programming, the 31 Days of Comics game that we've been playing, to take a look back at 2023 through the filter of a handful of comics. Like I did at the end of 2022, I'm terming these my most memorable reads of last year, which is not to say that they're the best or my favorites, although they could be, but they are the ones that made the deepest impression on me. And just like previous years, there are a couple of caveats. This is in no ways me ranking books against each other. And it definitely is not a list of books that were published in 2023. As I've mentioned often on this channel, I'm always catching up on reading. So none of these books, I think, were actually published in 23 or maybe one or two were. And I'm also not going to be creating any categories the way I may have done in previous years. And that's really because of 2023 in particular. I may talk a little bit in detail at the end of this video, but in short, I didn't read as much as I usually do in 2023. So although these lists are never a representative list of the year gone by, that's particularly the case this time around. Not only is it very idiosyncratic, but it's coming from a much smaller pool of reading than ever. But that is not to take away from any of these works. In fact, I think my temporary aversion to reading being overcome by these works actually speaks very highly of them. And without any further rambling, let's talk about the comics. One of my earliest reads of the year, maybe the second or third book that I read that is on this list of books is The Treasure of the Black Swan by Paco Roca and Guillermo Corral. Paco Roca has, over the course of four or five books, become one of my current favorite writers, and I'm very grateful to Fantagraphics Books for continuing to bring his works out in English. There's a more recent work by him that I haven't yet gotten to, but The Treasure of the Black Swan is a book I picked up in 2022, and I wanted to read that first. I'm a little concerned about continuing to buy without reading what I already have, so I resolved that I'm not going to get the new Paco Roca until I've read the last Paco Roca on my shelves that I haven't yet gotten to. But I was a little trepidatious about this, and that's because Paco Roca is only the artist of this book, the writer being Guillermo Corral. And every other book of Paco Roca's I've read has been something that he has both written and drawn, even if he was adapting someone else's prose. And the way his writing and art works together is a big reason why I really enjoy his comics. So I wasn't quite sure what working with another writer would yield. The Treasure of the Black Swan is billed as a sort of treasure hunt adventure, but that's actually a little misleading. Leading, the treasure is found within the first couple of pages of this story. What this book is actually about, apparently it's based on a true story with several fictional flourishes, but what the story ends up being about are the legal, political, corporate, financial wranglings and wrestling around that treasure. But instead of being disappointed, I found myself very thrilled by the procedural nature of this book. It does a fantastic job spanning geographies and time, and it does a especially good job getting you excited about legal filings. I love procedural thrillers and this feels like a more toned down version of the David Fincher movie Zodiac or even All the President's Men, being more interested in the details and the minutiae that make the bigger picture happen. So I'm sure that the number of times and the number of ways that this book surprised me has a lot to do with it making this list. I will say there is a romantic subplot that I didn't find necessary. I understand why it's there. It does humanize the characters and the characters involved are quite likable, but that's just the tiniest of nitpicks. Treasure of the Black Swan by Paco Roca and Guillermo Corral, published by Fantagraphics Books. The next book is Our Little Secret, written and drawn by Emily Carrington, published by Drawn and Quarterly. This is an autobiography. It's a comics autobiography about some very tough subjects. This involves sexual abuse, predatory sexual abuse and grooming of an underage girl. And it's the author's story. So it's a deeply personal and a very disturbing story. Our Little Secret is one of my most memorable comics of the year, not just because of the toughness of its subject matter, but really because of the way it takes autobiography and makes that into a form of therapy. You feel that the author is dealing with what they have had to suffer and dealing with their trauma, dealing with the repercussions of this throughout their life, but is also 
trying to deal with it through the pages of this comic itself. This book has a lot of stories in it, not just of uh, the secret of the title and of the abuser. There are questions about poverty and mental health, legal and political commentary, and not all the questions that it raises are answered. As a reader, I often have to wonder what it gives me to read about people's trauma. Am I being voyeuristic? But this book answers those questions because it's illuminating and demonstrating things that I wasn't aware of or that I may be only barely aware of. Giving us those particular details of an individual life makes it real in a way that large numbers and statistics sometimes fail to do. But the role and purpose of things only get them so far. What really makes Our Little Secret one of the most memorable reads of the year for me is not just the bravery or the open with which the author approaches this material, but also the craft and the talent, the way the book is edited, the way it jumps in time, the way it telescopes things and draws things out. Honestly, as raw and as nerve wracking as it is, in some ways, it also feels very polished, attempting to make a story or make sense out of the kind of things that this book talks about, I think is its greatest triumph. On this channel before, I've talked about Kate Beaton's Ducks as well as Una's Becoming Unbecoming. And Our Little Secret can sit on the shelves next to those books as wonderfully artistic expressions of truly horrific stories that individuals have faced, out of which comes a painful piece of art that seems to explain and heal, if possible, at the same time. After Treasure of the Black Swan, which had an artist I'm familiar with but not a writer, and Our Little Secret, whose writer-artist I'd never read anything by before, the next two books on my list are by the same writer-artist, someone I had read one book by before and wanted to get to more of their work. And these were My Friend Dharma and Trashed, both written and drawn by Durf Back Durf. Some time ago, I made a short video on Kent State by Durf Back Durf, which was the first book-length work by him I'd read. This is another autobiographical comic telling an extraordinary story of the writer, artist Durf Back Durf being classmates and sort of friends with infamous serial killer Jeffrey Dahmer. The relationship between the author and his friends and Dahmer is a little tenuous. The way they put it is, if Dahmer had any friends in high school, it was the author and his friends. Once again, I think I found a bit of a subversion of expectation. I was wondering if this would be more of a salacious type of I knew a serial killer story. But after the brilliance of Kent State, I finally decided to check out this earlier work. This book is fantastic. Fantastic, telling in a vignettish form the story of this odd relationship and this extremely disturbed individual who'd end up causing so much pain and grief. And as distinct as this work is from Our Little Secret by Emily Carrington, there were some strange parallels that I found. The primary being, where are the parents? Something that this book actually has in an explicit sentence, but the absence of adults, the absence of figures who are there to protect and look after children and recognize when they're suffering. Maybe nothing could have been done about Dharma, the book says towards the end, but he could have been put on medication. What he ended up doing didn't need to have happened if people were just paying attention. And that larger condemnation of that period of time of school and administration and families, as well as the role of mental health in familial structures made for a deeply engrossing and rich story. A very unusual but an excellent book, one that I regretted now that I read it having stayed away from for so long. But I moved quickly to remedy that situation by picking up Trashed, another book by Durf Back Durf that was out there and which had been recommended to me by a number of people, especially on my video for Kent State. After Kent State and my friend Dharma, I think my expectations were high from Trashed and it fulfilled them. In some ways, this is a lighter work than Kent State and my friend Dharma. Like my friend Dharma, it is an autobiographical story. It picks up with the author after high school, which is where my friend Dharma ends, and chronicles his days working as a garbage man. Once again, I don't know what I was expecting uh, from this, maybe a comedic adventures of a garbage man book. And there is some of that 
in this, but there's also more of that examination of society, how we consume landfills, what we throw away. There's definitely a critical eye towards systems and organizations that do this, as well as some larger questions about humanity that took me by surprise. After Kent State and my friend Dharma trashed, made it a hat trick for Durf Back Durf.